views and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Welcome in to the Mind, Body, and Spirit radio show. And we are here tonight on this lovely, lovely Wednesday evening. It is March the 15th, 2017. And we want to welcome you in. And uh, just let you know that you can log on to Black Talk Radio Network and hear any of the previous shows, any of the previous podcasts on Black Talk Radio Network. And uh, you can also follow Black Talk uh, Media Network on uh, YouTube. So that way, when we air, then you'll receive that YouTube link, that YouTube recommendation. And you can just log on and listen to us live or listen to the shows, as they say, on demand. So, and also, let me just let you know, you can always go on to the Black Talk Radio Media Project webpage and donate so that we can keep these shows coming to you. And also just to support black media since uh, there's such a a claim these days for uh, fake media. Well, you can log on to Black Talk Media Network and uh, Black Talk Radio Network and uh, listen to some real news. You can certainly do that because I know you want to get the lowdown and you want to get the news, the good news, the real news. And not the fake news, as they say. A lot of it's fake, 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 and distractions and all kinds of things. But welcome in, Feather Light. How are you? I am splendid. How are you? Hello, I'm everyone. Well. I'm well. Namaste. 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 Oh, all is well. How are you hanging in uh, with the snow there? On the uh, it was a, it was a, thank God it was a fluke. Uh, it, it became more icy conditions of, like today. So they got streets cordoned off as a staging area for getting the snow into big dump trucks. So it's causing oh. traffic jams in some major artery streets. But uh, overall, it was uh, not as bad as predicted, thank God, for Brooklyn, because uh, when it snows bad in Brooklyn, believe me, it, Brooklyn can become paralyzed. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, let me tell you, <clears throat> it is nice here um, in Houston. That's one thing mm-hmm. I love about Houston. Um, when I went out to walk my dogs, I actually just had right. to slip on my flip-flops. I did have on a long sleeve shirt, and uh, that was pretty much enough. Um, wow, what's the temperature? Uh, let me see. What is the temperature here? I think it's about 70. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And, you know, we have a rodeo taking place here in Houston. So uh, it's 58 degrees. I'm, I'm wrong. It's 58. And yeah, that's, that's that's pretty pretty cool for Houston. Uh, but still nice. Still nice. Tomorrow it'll be kind of like 72. But yeah, it's still nice. It was like 69 or 70 earlier today. So right. yeah, the temperature's mm-hmm. dropping now, but that, that's okay. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Rub it in, rub it in. Yeah. Yeah, we can well, get some sunshine. Yeah, well, some sunshine. We got one more week and it'll be springtime. Yeah, and I didn't even realize it was daylight savings time uh, the other day. I've just been so going, mm. going, going. I mean, I I woke up Monday morning um, early, like 3 o'clock in the morning, had to uh, 
stayed out to Austin and didn't even realize it was during daylight savings time. I mean, that just goes uh, to show you how yeah, off you I've been over the past few days. You got to keep some oil in your engine, child. Is it running your engine or any oil? <laughs> oh, yes. But you know what? Um, I have uh, some vacation time, um, in fact, yeah. starting tomorrow. So yeah. I'll be able to be back into a relaxed state yeah. of mind. But um, let me see, Featherlight is going to give us a review of last week. Because um, last week we had a guest on, Tony Caliglia. And he wrote a book called The Black Ten Commandments. So if you missed that, you can always go back and listen to that podcast mm-hmm. on uh, mm-hmm. the Black Ten Commandments. And he mostly came from a religious uh, perspective um, on some of the commandments. Um, I think like the first commandment was like something like, uh, I can't even remember, I'm going to be honest with you. Because when you start just putting it, basing everything on religion, I, I'm kind of turned off on that because everybody's not relig- religious. So I think that if you're talking about any type of elements that are supposed to help liberate all of us, then right. you kind of like uh, 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 base it on something that everyone, not everyone, but at least a majority of people will be attracted to and, and, and especially in this day and time you can't come to these millennials on some Jesus trip stuff because they're just not hearing uh, all of that well you know they hearing. have a reason they have a very good reason because you see they are not given the historical uh, fact about how we were lied to to get us to become obedient to the slave system but Christianity based on the way the white man beat it into us and brainwashed our, our, our heads into accepting Christianity, it was a ball faced lie. And a great mm-hmm. uh, idea that once you realize the truth, you don't want to go back to living a lie. No. Right. No. no, no. And people don't. They don't they just they just don't and people have been uh, praying and going to church for so long and they see that uh, we're still in the same condition. So these young people they're just not trying to hear that. So but yeah. um I would, you know, say if if you're interested in some of his ideas, then you can always uh, Google his book and his information, and you'll be able to find the Black Ten Commandments. And uh, then, let's see, Featherlight, you want to give uh, Kara Harris's uh, PayPal information, the young mother who, in Buffalo, New York, was um, arrested for homeschooling her children. Hi. And uh, she goes, she went to, uh, before the judge today, March um, 15th. Uh, of course, I don't know uh, the outcome of that. But there is always an update on her Facebook page. It's called In the Matter of T.R. Harris. And by the way, she is forbidden, prohibited from even going on her own face, Facebook page to give an update, so the update is, is uh, by her attorney, and that's why it's called In the Case of T.R. My Lord. Right, that's right. A fascist country, man. Um, really, fascist really. Country. So this is the uh, PayPal uh, information for those who have not donated, who would like to donate. Uh, this young lady really needs all the help that we can possibly give. It's HTTP colon, backslash, backslash, paypal, k-y-p-a-l dot me, m-e, backslash, and her name, k-i-a-r-r-e, and that is the paypal, again, http, colon, backslash, backslash, paypal, dot me, m-e, backslash, here, k-i-a-r-r-e. There is also a uh, petition that is being uh, uh, forwarded to, around for uh, signatures to present to the judge uh, to let them know just how many people are pulling for her or on her side who feel that this is wrong. And um, I'm sure you can get that information off of Facebook as mm-hmm. well. It's, it's pretty long, but you'll, you'll find it. Um, also, we talked a little bit about uh, remedies for baking soda and Epsom salt. Those are two very common and inexpensive items that most people have in their kitchen or bathroom. 
and I gave a number of, of, of uh, items or, or remedies or, that you can use these these two for. Uh, more than the Epsom salt is more than just for um, for uh, aching muscles. I use the Epsom salt as, re as recommended by my doctor when I tore my stitches when I had my child. And there was nothing that he could do as a doctor. He could not stitch me back up. He said it was it was too badly damaged. And I was to go home and sit in Epsom salt for 20 minutes, warm water, 20 minutes a day, and it healed. It healed with just by doing that. So um, Epsom salt is wonderful. Bacon salt is, is fabulous. Bacon soda is fabulous. It pulls toxins out of your body. So make sure you have those two items in your home. The quote for the last week was, when people treat you like they don't care, believe them. Believe them. They don't. And adjust yourself <laughs> accordingly. <laughs> adjust yourself accordingly. Mm, okay. Adjust yourself accordingly. All mm -hmm. right, then. Okay, Sounds I want good. to share... Uh, did you have any hot topics you wanted to go over or anything uh, you want to see mind, body, and spirit? Uh, I'll tell you what. Go ahead on and share your mind, body, and spirit, and then I'll share my hot topic because it may take a okay. minute. All right. So, <clears throat> mind, body, and spirit this week is entitled, Who Gets the Cup First? Who Gets the Cup First? Who Gets the Cup First? When you're on the plane, as you prepare to take off or as you take off, a flight attendant makes it very clear to you that in an emergency, should the little cup drop down, put it on your face first. Not the little guy sitting next to you on your lap, but you. Because you must first be in the condition to help someone else, to do for someone else. You can't give them the cup and then just pass out. Dropping the cup, in the case of a little child, you leave them hanging because you did not put the cup on yourself first. First, love yourself. The initials are lie. Lie. First, love yourself. Caretakers often wind up sicker than the person that they're caring for simply because they forgot the flight attendant's message. So clearly communicated on each flight, put the cup on yourself first. There was this well-known entertainer who was touring in his 70s. Touring. Janet Jackson and a number of other entertainers over the years have collapsed during the tour because it's hard on the body. But this particular entertainer, he wanted to... He wanted to please his fans. His fans wanted more of him. His body sent him signals. Take care of me. I'm tired. I need rest. But his fans wanted more. His doctor advised him to take some time off because it was too much on his body. But his fans shouted more and more. He wanted to please his fans, so he chose to put the cup on their faces. Make sure that they were happy. By the time he decided to take a breath from the little cup, there was not enough left for him. And he transcended this life. And guess what? His fans still want more. But they will have to settle for recordings. Now, one last thing I wanted to round out my message by sharing a comment from a client of one of our guests tonight, King Noor. King Noor is an erotic masseuse, a master fetish trainer, among other things. You'll hear from him a little bit later. And um, it was on his website, and it said, this is what our clients are saying. This is by a client of his. I had such an incredible experience yesterday in the hands of King Noor. I am a true believer. What, what is that the noise that's, that's in the background? It just keeps going, going, going. What is that? Mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't hear anything. Okay. I hear it. Okay. I had such an incredible experience yesterday in the hands of King Noor. 
I am a true believer that in order to be able to give, you must fill your cup first. Isn't that what I just said? You can't give from an empty cup. As a Tantra energy healer and a sex health advocate, <laughs> with a fairly successful practice, I have a need for healing services that can refill my cup and keep me functioning at a level where I can properly, properly be of service to the clients that I work with. Mm. Who's my point? Fill your cup first. Make mm-hmm. sure you're okay. So just to give our listeners a little taste of what tonight's guests specialize in and how well they do it, allow me to continue this feedback. Trying to find the right type of healer, sensual energy practitioner is not easy as a woman. Being able to find a safe place to explore and receive with King Noor was heaven sent. From the initial communications to set a level of comfort to the actual session in which you set time aside to discuss what you would like to explore. King Noor completely taking care of every detail. Every aspect left me to choice, but to be completely in the moment. I look forward to being able to explore more of myself in his hands, as well as referring some of my clients that may need that extra push to become closer to their highest, best sexual self. self. Sincerely, Juicy Josh. So really? she just confirmed what I was just saying. I found this after I wrote this piece. Mm. And I thought, how appropriate. Let me just put that in with, with my mind, body, and spirit. Fill your own cup first. Fill your own cup first. You'll be better ever able to serve and help someone else. Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, I definitely stay. believe in that. Namaste. I definitely believe in that. Filling your own cup first and taking care of mm-hmm yourself first so I, I certainly can appreciate that yeah, makes sense. sometimes sometimes we forget mm-hmm. oh yes absolutely and we'll try to do everything uh, for someone else always fulfilling someone else's dream without thinking about uh, our needs so thank you fellow life for sharing that Preach, I truly appreciate that before our guests come on um the kinky couple master fetish trainers. I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing what they will share with us about their uh, business enterprises. They also have royal fetish films. Um, we have Jet Set Jasmine, um, which is composed of Jasmine and her partner, uh, King Noor. His name is uh, uh, Hassan Salam. And their business is called Jet Setting, Jet Setting Jasmine. And they travel around the world teaching couples or singles how to explore their fetishes, their fantasies, um, BDSM, um, learning to uh, build your confidence, and just exploring a sexual, the sexual side of yourself that you, that you, that you may not have been able to express and explore, I guess you could say. And so I am so looking forward to hearing what they are going to share with us about their business. And um, you may want to go ahead on and log on to their page because they'll be joining us in about uh, 10 minutes. But the uh, web page is jetsettingjasmine.com. So if you've ever wondered anything about uh, bondage and discipline, um, BDSM, fetishes. SMM, fetishes, female dominance, um, submissive positions, and not just like physical position, but just being in that physical, uh, um, submissive or dominant position um, or state. Tonight, role playing. Yes, role playing. Tonight's show is for you because. Uh, They will explain to us what is a fetish, what is a kink, what is BDSM, and and why are so many African Americans more apprehensive to Uh indulging in these types of fetish. You got that right. Religion. 
Darn the <laughs> yes. again, Like that's yes. why I said I don't do yes. all the Jesus freak stuff. I, I just mm. I just I just don't do all of that. Because these people uh produce fantasy flight parties mm-hmm. and um Jasmine teaches a steel and stilettos class and King Noah teaches erotic touch massage. So, yes, we're going to talk about all of that. But before we get into that, let me just go ahead. I, I have to touch. I have to touch on this new video uh, that's been released related to uh, the teenager Mike Brown being shot yes, and killed yes, yes, by yes. Officer uh, D- uh, was Darren Wilson. Uh, August 9th, 2014. Um, In Ferguson, Missouri, Mike Brown, as some people may remember, Michael Brown, he was shot as he was uh, walking down the street and he was uh, uh, approached by cop Darren Wilson. Now, so this video, this video, this this so-called new video that has been released um, as a result of this uh, 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 filmmaker, he's produced a documentary called Strange Fruit. And so, in this video, he was able to gain access to a video that shows Mike Brown coming into this same store. The store that he was accused of stealing the cigarettos, the corner corner store. Mike Brown apparently has some type of relationship um, with some of the store owners. Because he went to the store the night before he was shot. So I think the video shows a timestamp of like 1 a.m. when Mike Brown went to the store. He gives the like four guys behind, behind the counter working the store. He gives them something and they smell it. And then they in turn give Mike Brown a box of cigarillos. These same cigarillos that Mike Brown was accused of uh, grabbing and stealing and assaulting the store owner yeah. the next day, right? Yeah. Okay, so anybody that live in the neighborhoods know that a lot of these black guys stand out in front of these stores that are owned by different people. Right. Not sure what nationality they are, but if you drive through any neighborhood or hood, you you'll see this. So we know that th- right. this this goes on. And I'm not saying Mike Brown was engaged in some type of drug deal because I don't know I wasn't there. I didn't smell it. So I don't know if all I know it could be some herbal tea because I smell my herbal tea too. It could have been a uh, box of uh, uh, cologne uh, oils or something. I don't know. I don't know what, what, what Mike Brown exchanged with these people. But whatever it was, he exchanged something. They gave him the box of cigarillos. Mike Brown proceeds to walk out of the store, but then it seems like he turns back and decides that he's going to leave the box there and pick it up, return to pick up, uh, retrieve his box of cigarillos the next day, which is the video that we, the public, were able to view, remember. So we were able to view the video when he came in the next day, and it seems like the store owner... At that time, the little small guy, he was unaware of the store work. I don't know if he owned it or worked there. He was unaware, apparently, of the transaction, uh, previous, the, the uh, previously arranged transaction between Mike Brown and the other guys that worked the store. So, when I, I'm imagining Mike Brown must have said, explained to him, those are my cigarillos right there, because they were like right there behind the bulletproof glass. Everybody know how these stores are set up. All the swishers right. and the cigarillos, all of that stuff is right up front with the BC powders and the phone cords. All of the items that we go into the store and may purchase right away. You know how these corner stores are set up. The little right. hats and oils and whatever, all of this stuff. They have everything up there. Okay, so the cigarillos are behind the counter next to the cash register. So what we see on the video is him reaching back there as if he's like, give me my damn Cigarellos, this these mine. I, you know, these guys know that I left these here. You the one that's uninformed. I don't have anything to do with that. I need my box. Okay. Right. So that's when we see uh, Mike Brown, so-called assault the store worker at that time. Which I said at the uh, initially when we saw this video. First of all, I've never seen Mike Brown. Don't know him, but I do know, and I have seen a lot of big young 
guys that look just like that. So really, I don't know if that was him on that video or not. So I'm not, I'm not trying to hear anything about him going in the store stealing anything because first of all, these people uh, have what they call Hollywood, so they can make movies and make films and distort create illusions and whatever so that was my whole situation and i knew it was something behind this whole film when we saw it back in august 2014 so now all of a sudden this video this video is produced and we see that he did not steal the cigarillos now let me just bring this home quickly so if you recall because i know sometimes we have short uh memory and all but just think back Amazing. number one yeah, amnesia. Number one, that same little store owner that was quote unquote assaulted by Mike Brown, remember his initial interview, he said Mike Brown did not steal those cigarillos. He comes in the store wow. all the time. That's but right. we never did see that video too much after that. It was never like constantly replayed. But what was pushed to us was that he stole the cigarillos. He assaulted uh, the store owner. He stole the cigarette. I mean, constantly that was that was pushed to us, right? And then with Darren Wilson, the cop, remember his statement was the reason why the story was the reason why he stopped Mike Brown and Dorian Johnson. At first, now this is how they lie, and what uh, Baba D. Greg will always tell us: you got to watch each one of these news stories because they add stuff, delete, and they lie. At first. The off, uh, cop said he was only approaching Mike Brown and Dorian to ask them, hey, guys, uh, would you mind moving out of the street and, and, uh, and walk right. onto the sidewalk? Yeah. Which really yeah. didn't matter where the hell they were walking anyway, because as I mentioned before, I went to Ferguson. I went on that street. I was on that street. It's like a little town. So it didn't make any difference. It's not like it's a major street. They were walking in their apartment complex, actually. So it's not like they were walking on some major street where yeah, someone accidentally. Exactly. No obstruction whatsoever. So, plus, I mean, plus it, the it, lot, sidewalks were so narrow. They had all the bushes coming onto the sidewalk. So there really wasn't enough space for two Average sized men to walk on to walk. side by side anyway. Exactly. I when I say the sidewalk too. Yeah, the sidewalk was very, very small. It was a very narrow street, very narrow street, like a like a small. And can't you up there up north? You know those streets, like in Philadelphia, the little small cobble streets. So it was a little small street like this. So it's my not uncle, some. Yeah, my mm -hmm. uncle lived on a street like that in Philadelphia. Absolutely. So it's a very narrow street. So um, they were not obstructing any traffic or anything. And, and again, here in Austin, Texas, on 6th Street, white people can walk up and down the street drunk, falling out, throwing up everything, vomiting mm -hmm. on everybody and themselves. It's no problem. But all of a sudden in Ferguson, two young guys can't walk from the store in their neighborhood without being killed. So, but remember... What we, uh, Officer Wilson said he was uh, uh, doing was actually just stopping them to ask them to move over to the sidewalk. And then he claimed he received a call about an armed robbery. So all of this was fabricated. There was wow. no armed robbery. The, guys, the, the, the store worker said he never even called the cops about an armed robbery. Jesus. Exactly. So all of this stuff, all of this was just made up. These young boys were being harassed for no reason. And no reason. one young man lost his life. And several other people lost their lives. Yeah. You know, uh, when you know That's you saying. hate black, when you know you are an Afrophobe, but you hate black people, and that you can have a gun and a badge, and you can brutalize blacks and suffer no political or legal consequences. See, there, there are communities that a white cop and a black cop know. Don't mm. mess with mm. I don't care if a child, child smoking cigar-sized marijuana and uh -huh. drinking a gallon, a gallon bottle of uh, gin. Right. You, you can't touch them. Right. Well, exactly. I, I mean, I like, like, like I, 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 I said, I don't care. Uh -huh. I, I don't care if I, I said it. I said it then, and I said now. I don't care if Mike Brown was walking down the street with this store on his back. There was no reason for you to shoot and kill him. No reason. No reason whatsoever. So but you see, they have the uh, authority.
to take a black young man's life because the system allows it. Yeah, it does. It does not allow a black young man to have the same rights as a, as a young white man who is many times drunk, intoxicated with drugs. Look at the high rate of young people that are white on uh, on drugs like uh, uh, heroin. There's a heroin ep- epidemic in some of these small white towns. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that uh, there are a lot of them are breaking the law, but the cops don't go around killing them. No, they have uh, services and, and a billion dollars worth of resources allocated to yes. help anyone that's suffering from opioid addiction. But we have our guest about to join us now, and I'm so looking forward to having them come on and so we want to welcome them i want to give out my hand clap because i don't know if scott is there to give us our sound effects of a hand clap so i'm just gonna do my own little hand clap Me too, for our guest. <laughs> yes <laughs> let's welcome our guest in jet setting jasmine and this is the the kinky couple the master fetish trainers jasmine jet setting jasmine and king noir we want to welcome both of you and thank you so much for joining us tonight thank you thank you yes how are you so much for having us oh yes (laughs) yes 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 so king b you know you need to stay on because um we've discussed fetishes and these are the fetish trainers and they are world traveled fetish trainers. So they travel the world teaching couples and sing, uh, single people how to explore and uh, I guess indulge in another sexual side that maybe they have not explored. And so tonight we want to talk about BDSM, fetishes, and kinks. So welcome, welcome. Welcome, and please just tell us about um, you and your services, and how did you even get started into servicing and consulting and the steel and stilettos? Jasmine, I watched that steel and stilettos video, and, and when we finish with this show, I have to try some of that. Let me pull out my chair so that I can practice on some of those moves on that steel and stilettos video. I love it, sister. Me too. Oh, me too. I love thanks. that. Oh, thank you so much. I can't wait to get you ladies in a class with us. Yes. So um, we have a lot going on, King and I, and um, I just want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk to your listeners about what may be something new or, you know, for others a chance to revisit some um, sneakier sides of things. So, um we have been together doing this type of work for six years now, but both of us have a combined um, experience of over 20 years in both the adult industry and working and providing clinical therapy. So we really infuse, uh, I guess, the sexy side of human work together to create what you guys know as fantasy flight parties, royal fetish films, and our fitness, our signature fitness program, Steel and Stilettos. Mm, excellent. So, well, I, um, I saw an article in the Ebony Magazine, February 2017 mm-hmm. issue, and uh, I love the title. It was called Fifty Shades Darker, mm-hmm. and it... Um, I wanted to share with with the audience a little bit about what she said about her interview with you. It says, when it comes to expressions of sexuality, there are more than 50 shades, but rarely is there mainstream representation of people of color when the subject of BDSM is mentioned. Within the field of sexuality, there are many black educators who do extraordinary things to help others become more comfortable with their sexual expressions. And contrary to popular belief, there are black people making major moves within the subculture of BDSM. Um, After years of searching for a mentor in the area of fetish play that I could relate to as a black woman, I was led to an amazing duo who not only helped me understand exactly what the fetishes are, 
but they also made me comfortable with accepting that my kinky side is healthy and here to stay. I like that because um, some of us, we do have a kinky side, but we don't want anybody to know. Uh, we think that maybe it's not a good thing. Um, we may be with a partner, and we may want to try something, but we're afraid to mention it because we don't want them to think that, oh, you're freaky, you know, because I've heard some people say, man, she's freaky, you know, and no one, they like it. But then the woman is, is, is hesitant to, you know, to ask for it or, or to bring it up or, or, or as we mentioned earlier, uh, they're Christian and they feel that this is dirty or uh, a, a Christian shouldn't behave in such a manner, but th they, they feel inside, well, you know, I'm really not getting what I really want to get. I, I, I really don't feel like it tonight. Or, or I've actually heard some women say, well, when he, when he wants it and I don't want it, I just turn my back to him and let him have his way, and then he goes to sleep and I go to sleep. I think, oh, my goodness, what, what a way to really... You know, what a way to talk about such a wonderful thing, sex right. and sexuality, you know? So um, what do you say to to couples or, or to a single person who who feels like, well, I mean, I want to explore myself, but, but, but I don't know how to go about approaching it with my partner? That's a great question. King, I'm going to let you. Um, well, yeah. first and foremost, with any kind of relationship, whether it be something on the more kinky side or even the more vanilla aspects, the number one thing that we always speak about is honesty. You will never be happy in your relationship if you can't be honest with yourself about who you are. And in, in turn, be honest with your partner about what it is that you're about and what it is that you desire. Mm. So first and foremost, you know, a conversation is, is usually the best way to start it, even, even when it comes to matters of kink and fetish, because, you know, you don't want to just have your partner come home and you've got everything already ready and it might be something that, set something off for them or makes them uncomfortable, you know, mm -hmm. so having the conversation first is always a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. If it's something that you're uncomfortable with doing face-to-face, -face, you know, we live in the age of technology, you can send a little sex, you can send uh, a nice picture of yourself holding an item that you might want to use in a bedroom. There are many different mm -hmm. ways to go about it, but it's definitely something that you know, if you're honest about what your relationship is already and you know the ways that you and your partner communicate best, that's the way that you want to start going about it. Ah. And, you know, I would all, I would always say, uh, in addition to that, just to dovetail what you shared, uh, King Noor, um, I think we need to take time and find partners that have the same interests also in terms of, um, sex, sexual experience and experiences and escapades that you would like to experience because if you know that you're interested in kink kink or BDSM or, or some type or, or fetishes then I think it would uh, be worth worthwhile and worth your time to just find someone try to find someone or, or explore and interview that person to see what a, what their sexual appetite is because I would be very very disappointed if I plan to spend the rest of my life with someone that's not even um, into some of the things that I would like to explore right. so to me that's just yeah, a that's waste definitely, that's yeah. definitely important but also one of the things that we all know is that through time we all grow we all expand mm -hmm. we all find new things that we are interested in mm -hmm. so Definitely, if you already know what it is that you're into, mm -hmm. be vocal about that from the beginning. That's not something mm -hmm. that you want to just keep to yourself. Mm -hmm. But if there are new things that you have that, sh that interest you or that you want to share with your partner, there are ways to go about that also. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, indeed. But now here's a uh, here's a problem, y'all. If the person realizes that you are evolving and they want to stay in gear, the lower gear, they could easily say, "Well, if you don't like it, you can leave." Or you've been watching those uh, adult films, and now you want to try it on me? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's like uh, I always say there's nothing wrong with experimenting mm-hmm. it's, as long as it's uh, agreed upon to uh, bring uh, along that thing you call ecstasy to the mm-hmm. utmost because mm-hmm. I look at women who huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. let me just let me just address the first half of your question or your comment yeah. really your sexual relationship is a reflection of your general relationship. It's a subset of it. So if you have a hard time being introduced to change sexually or growing in a certain area, being able to explore something with your partner, then you're probably having that same barrier um, in other aspects of your relationship. So I don't think that is inherently just sexual. I would just kind of think about it from a more general context. That is so true. That is so true, sister. You like a, you like a standing hammer hitting the nail on the head. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, well, could could uh, either one of you, um, for starters, define BDSM? What's the difference between fetish and a kink? Oh, come on, King. I love to hear you. <laughs> All right, I was. Come on, King. I was being a gentleman for <laughs> well, all right, a fetish is anything that you sexualize that is not the specific that is not the specific use of sex with a sexual organ, so a lot of times people automatically go to like a foot fetish because you don't need your feet to reproduce, or some people go directly to b d s m BDSM itself is a fetish or what people refer to as a kink, but it's itself is not fetishism as a whole. A lot of people make that mistake and think, oh, if I have a fetish, then I have to be into whips and chains and, and things of that nature. All those things are fetishes. They're not fetish as a whole. BDSM stands for bondage, dominance and submission, bondage and discipline, sadism, masochism. So it's very specific. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to a kink, a kink could be, you know, anything. I think usually it's defined more as like, uh, Jazz, what would you say is, is defined more as a kink? Um, I would say it's more of um, when we start to introduce some instruments and um, or even going as far as things like scat play or urine play. Um, that's extreme kink. A lot of pain. So we're talking about the more extreme ends of things where you're finding pleasure in high levels of pain or intense sessions of humiliation. That, to me, is my threshold for kink. But Everyone has a different level of kink for themselves. So mm. usually, mm-hmm. usually they'll say that kink is something that's unconventional. But the thing is, uh, when it comes to unconventional, you know, no two people in the world are exactly the same with mm-hmm. what they like and what turns them on and what they enjoy. So I think that one thing that is important is to realize, and I think you had kind of asked this in your question earlier, is there is nothing that you do as long as you leave out animals, children, and people who say no. Mm-hmm. As long right. as you leave those three things out of it, there's yeah. nothing that you do that's wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, if if your partner is, is willing and interested or it's something that you yourself get off to on your own time, then that's perfectly all right and that's perfectly normal. I agree with that. Um, let's see. Um, so, so, could you give us an example of like a 
an example of BDSM because when I think of BDSM, I think of the woman with the mask and the stilettos and the latex or leather and the chains and the whip, and which I have a whip and it's just been in my drawer. I'm so upset about that. It's been in my drawer for eight years. Um, but that's what I think of when I think of BDSM and I think of uh, maybe like the ball in someone's mouth, I guess the torture ball, I don't know. And I just have all of these ideas, which I wouldn't mind exploring myself. <clears throat> I have no opposition to any of that. Um, but but give us an example of like a, a BDSM scenario. So, um, go ahead, King. No, I was just going to say what what you have in mind for BDSM is uh, BDSM also involves mental aspects of your sexual play. Okay. Like Jasmine is very into uh, mental control. So, but dominance and submission can also involve whips and chains and, and ball gags. This, the scenarios are pretty much infinite in regards to that. It's all about the scenario that best suits you and what, what you would be interested in. Ah. Okay. So, I'm thinking about you as a witch and <laughs> how we can give you a little bit of homework and you can share with us and your audience later how it goes for you. Okay. Okay. So, she says she has this whip that she has not used, it's just sitting there. <laughs> and um, as a form of of BDSM, we're going to just do a little exercise where King and I will be a dominant and you will be submissive and you're, we're going to give you a little bit of homework. Oh, we're going to my. Do, yes. <laughs> we're going to do this long distance. We live okay. in different states. Um, we're not laying, you know, any hands on you. There's nothing physical that we'll be inflicting, so this is not going to be a pain. Well, unless you make it that way, but I don't plan to make it painful. Um, and we're going to just be showing you some psychological dominance in, in a sexual sense. So, um, King, I'm going to say some, you know, I'm going to give one activity and then you can add on to it. Is that cool? Sure, that works. Okay, we're going to have to think on our feet. So tonight I want you to take that whip of yours and I want you to spray it with your favorite perfume just a little bit, not much at all. And slip into a very, very, very nice, comfortable piece of either lingerie or be naked. I just want you to feel good in your body tonight. And I want you to lay down and I want you to take that whip and I want you to sleep with it tonight. I want you to get very, very comfortable with it. Okay, King, what's your homework? Black, black clothes. Well, I would like you to use that whip on both sides of the whip, both the handle and the tail of the whip. You just use it to trace your body. Oh. You don't have to strike yourself with it unless you want to strike yourself with it. Okay. Whatever form of touch and whatever level of impact that you want to use it on yourself, I just want you to feel it and actually make love to the whip in the sense of letting it explore your body and judging how it feels on your skin. Oh, yes. I am definitely um, getting into my homework after this radio <laughs> show. <laughs> I need to connect with my whip. That's probably why I haven't used it because I have not connected with it like this. See, I see how therapeutic this is already. This is wonderful. Oh. Thank wow. you, thank you. And You're this welcome. is something that you mentioned on your website, too, that um, you offer consultation and therapeutic consultations. Is that correct? We do. Um, so my background is a licensed clinical social worker and mm -hmm. gerontologist. So um, I chose to use my therapeutic skills uh, in the way that we're talking tonight, you know, providing mm -hmm. consultation, education for all things sexual and kinky, but also for the trauma. There's a lot of trauma that surrounds sex as well, yes. which is why we also have to talk about this because, you know, we get silent. 
on a lot of issues around sex and sex positivity and body image. Mm-hmm. So he and I both bring that uh, respect for people having consent, having healthy sex lives, having free sex lives to the forefront of our work. Mm-hmm. Speaking, speaking of, of trauma, um, yes, I had listened to one of your, your radio shows. I don't know which one it was. But you mentioned that you um, had a consultation with a battered woman. She had been um, battered uh, in her relationship. I don't know if it was her husband. But she had been battered for some time. And, of course, we all know that that leaves some scars. And mm-hmm. I'm sure that that would have some kind of effect on her uh, sexual life. And you were able to help her. Explain to us how you were able to help her with your services. Well, first, I don't want to give, um, you know, we certainly did facilitate um, her healing, but she did a lot of the hard work. And I think that's really important to to mention that, you know, we all have to be ready to, to be well. And she was. She was open to a lot of the suggestions that we had, and most of the work that we did was coming from a place of Um, Mm self-love. It was also coming from empowerment. You know, if you you feel really strongly about something or you've always been curious about it, why not? Or, you know, why not share that about yourself? So um, just really changing her perspective because for many years she was really living under someone else's standards. Um, someone else's mm-hmm. desires there. Also, their abuse, the you know, emotional abuse that she was under. So mm-hmm. uh, this stuff doesn't happen overnight, and mm-hmm. um, we certain, certainly don't consider the work that we do a one-stop shop. Um, mm-hmm. We work with a lot of amazing partners in mental health and uh, physical health to make sure that all of our clients are, you know, it's a, well, a whole approach. Um, we have a lot of people come to us, and like she, she was a part of a workshop, and that led to um, seeing her over time. But we have a lot of people come to us with a sexual dysfunction or a presumed sexual dysfunction, and when we get to the root of it, it is it's trauma about something you know maybe sexually related when they were young or um, rape, like being molested. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Um, even, you know, really, really strong standards, maybe due to religious reasons. Um, King really does a lot of work with folks of the Muslim faith that have a really hard time being able to express themselves, even in the way that we still find, you know, pretty freely in movies and, um, you know, things like that. There's That freedom is not always accepted in people's religion, and we can say the same. I think the gentleman said something about the church. Um, Mm -hmm. And those are areas that can really hinder us when we want to explore or be ourselves with our partners. So, you know, I love, I love, love, love the work that we get to do. It's fun, you know, we do our films. It's fun when we're doing our stealing stilettos and all of those components, but when we get to kind of the heart of, why people are struggling in the area or they're not growing, I get very excited. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Um, King B, you definitely need to go on to YouTube and uh, check out some of the videos. Just uh, go to, let me see, we can go to jetsetjasmine.com, right, to view the web page. And then you can also go to YouTube and subscribe because I did subscribe. And um, you can watch some of their videos, King B. And to our listeners, be sure to log on. And how how can people um, connect with you? And if someone would like to schedule a fantasy flight party and talk about these fantasy flight parties, that would that sound like something I need, like this weekend? And well, and the red eye. Well, we definitely uh, are available for consultations. You. Our email addresses are up on the website, or you can reach out to us via Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at Jet Setting Jasmine or at King Noir. Or you can email us at Royal Fetish Films 
So there's there's many ways to uh, to get in contact with him. Okay. We do, what we is do the red eye slide? People interested. Say that one more time. What is what is the red eye slide? That's a, that is the um I think that's the sleepover one. So um we do kind of like a an experience say you and your girlfriend um wanted to come over and, you know, have a, a sexy weekend or you and a couple of couples um wanted to put a group event together. So we take you all the way through like a field trip to maybe a singers club or create it just depends on the group, you know, whether it's mild or wild, um, have a little uh, party where we're playing games and totally interactive, all the way to uh, some rel- relaxation techniques. Um, King does the erotic touch massage where he not only just um, actually provides the massages, but he also does trainings and tutorials on erotic touch for couples. And then we'd wake you up, give you a great workout, and um, have a workshop, one for the men, one for the women, or together. And then we send you on your way for your weekend. So, <laughs> and every, everything we do is about not only helping couples make better love, but also having singles be open to loving themselves more, which only leads to loving your partner better as well. Mm-hmm. Um, right. You actually mentioned something about the videos. We're currently doing a free video giveaway. So you yes. can get just a little taste of what we do with Royal Fetish Films. Uh, oh. Jazz, they just have to go to the website for that, right? Um, I'll send over a I have it, and I oh. have viewed it, and I have to put it on pause, take a breath, <laughs> <laughs> and get back to watching it. I love it. I love it. So this is our gift. Um, uh, from uh, Jazz Setting, Get Setting Jasmine and uh, King Noah to, uh, to our audience. This is their gift to you. Uh, we're going to take a break in three minutes, but let me, let me see if I can. Let's see. I am. It's HTTPS colon backslash backslash um, T-I-N-Y URL dot com backslash J S J two zero one seven. And I'll repeat that and then we're gonna go to a break. You're gonna love it. H T T P S colon backslash backslash tiny T I N Y U R L dot com backslash J S J Two zero one seven. That is the gift to you, and you are going to absolutely love it. Have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> Have a seat and watch it. Good. <laughs> yeah, two minutes. Um, let me just say this right quick um, before we go to our, our break, our 10 o'clock break. This is from um, King Noah, also known as The Experience. I like that. Um, it says, when it comes to the healing aspect of Just Sitting Jasmine's work, King Noor is deeply rooted in the healing power of touch through erotic massage. The sense of touch and connection to another human being is a universal healing method. I witnessed firsthand how a client walks in and is visibly, visibly anxious and leaves not just relaxed, but self-confident, explains King. Throughout the session, Clients are given options which many have not experienced in an intimate setting. I am patient, allowing them the time to take in the empowering feeling of making a decision for their body, their experience, and directing that is executed as imagined. The feedback I receive is remarkable. And when we come back from the break, uh, King Noah, I want you to go through the different um, choices that they have for the massage, which I thought this was fabulous, because I'm just like, okay, I'm ready for my massage, and then it began. But you have a consultation as to what kind of massage would you like. 
<laughs> I want to hear that also. So we'll be right back after this break. You are tuned in to the Mind, Body, and Spirit radio show. And we are here with fetish trainers, Jet Set Jasmine, Jasmine, and King Noir. We'll be right back. Since 2008, providing new black media for the masses. All right, and we are back here at the Mind, Body, and Spirit Radio Show. And tonight we are just all things sexy, 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 sexual, and Erotic. I like to say erotic, exotic, and X-rated because that's me. I put the sizzle in sis, baby. Sis, sis, sis. I'm on fire. Woo! All right. We are back. And let's talk about some erotic practices. And Feather Light, you said you want King Noor to talk about uh, the consultation prior to receiving your massage. So can we delve into that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the main thing is what we send out is something that we call the massage menu. And it runs down a list of the different massages that are offered. The thing about erotic touch massage that makes it different than anything else is massages are about relaxation primarily. Mm-hmm. And in some cases, you know, leaving the moment. Erotic touch is actually about being present in that moment. It's Mm. very relaxing, but at the same time, it's entertaining and stimulating as well, depending on which package that you want to choose for yourself. And Mm. touch is healing. You know, and there are many different ways to touch. And, you know, I've worked and learned from all types of different practitioners, from Reiki to deep tissue and Shiatsu. But at the same time, what we incorporate is it's almost like if you're going to get a massage at a male review. So there's a lot of eroticism, there's romance, and there's passion involved in it as well. Mm. So we run down uh, different packages from Bliss, The Shades of Grey, Climax, Sunday, Fire and Ice, Pure Ecstasy, and we just added something new called the Midas Touch. So each one is very unique. For example, Midas Touch is warmed oils uh, prepared to anoint your body in a body worship type of manner. We actually just shot a scene called um, Sanctified and Juicified that is a precursor to everything that you'll experience in the Midas Touch massage. Fire and ice, we deal with wax, hot candle wax, and ice cubes. Mm-hmm. And the sensations on the body, you know, uh, both are healing to the body, you know. Anytime you have an injury, they tell you to ice it to reduce mm-hmm. the swelling. And, you know, that's, that's good for your body and also the heat is just in there as well. But mm-hmm. that nice little drip from the candle wax, like if you enjoy getting spanked, mm-hmm. that nice sharp drip from the candle wax gives you a similar sensation. Mm-hmm. So mix together, feel amazing. Wow. Uh, I'm sure. Probably the most, probably the most popular as of late has been the fetish training massage, which people started calling Shades of Grey because of the book. Mm-hmm. It deals with sensory deprivation, blindfolds, handcuffs, rope. So, you know, if you go to massage anybody, they're not going to tie you up to the table. But yeah. when you... Uh, when you come to Central on the Wall, you, you can have that opportunity. And the difference is, you know, mm-hmm. when one of your senses is taken away, all your other senses are heightened. So if you yes. don't have the ability to see, or I use uh, noise canceling, 
headphones and you're not able to hear every single touch, every single breath is going to make you feel it even more. It's going to be heightened. I love it. Absolutely. Okay, fire and ice. Whew, I'm not sure about the hot wax, but um, maybe I could try that. Uh, what about you, Feather? Fire and ice. I think you're. I think you have muted yourself, Feather. Oh, okay, okay. I think I would like it. I think. I think I would. I know that. Um, in healing, I've seen in several different uh, alternative healing uh, uh, references that alternate between heat and ice yes. mm-hmm. is, is healing. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you use the heat and then you use the ice you use the and you just go back and forth. So that, that does something. That does something for the body that's really good. So I would be willing to try um, I was really kind of interested in the climax because, you know, when people hear climax, they think, hmm. So um, can you explain how that works, that, that particular, if I wanted that particular package? Well, climax incorporates one of our elevation products. And oh. It's you. There are many ways to use them, and they're used during the massage, but, you know, I like to tell people I'm like Las Vegas. So what happens there stays there. Oh, I, love I love it. I love it. Oh, that sounds great. All right. All right. That is, I think that is so unique to offer packages when you go to yes. for a massage. Like, what, what, what do you want to get out of this? Mm-hmm. Instead of, okay, lay down on the table and, you know. And, and do what you think. You're you're more interested in what the client wants, and you give mm-hmm. them what they want. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. it. The massage is designed. Go ahead. Yes, I was just going to say the massage is designed to fit your um, needs and desires. So right, at that particular I can, time. Mm-hmm. I can appreciate that. Me too. Mm-hmm. And so King Noah is also an MC. Yes. Tell us about your music. Uh, I've been making music ever since I was about yay high, since I was a young and I love I love the artistic expression. It's the same the same way I look at, at the films that we make, you know. Making love is an art form and, and when I write I'm making love to your mind in different ways. Uh, oh. my music just but it's but it stands, you know. Um, my music stands life and existence. So I deal with everything from uh, politics and things that are going on in our neighborhood to romance and trying to find ways to escape the trappings of everyday life, you know. Because you also consider yourself a global activist as well. So you're a global activist, masseuse, um, and an impact play connoisseur. Well, I, I put out, a, I released an album called Music Is My Weapon, where we used all the profits and proceeds to build a school, a freshwater well, and a medical facility in Guinea-Bissau, West Africa. Uh, I worked in my own community of Jersey City, New Jersey, for over seven years, putting together a food and clothing drive. And, you know, the work that we do as well with uh, Jessa and Jasmine to actually work with people in our community to do to find ways for us to love better. You know, I think uh, one of the main things uh, in our community that we deal with, deal uh, in regards to our oppression, is that we're afraid to love ourselves and we're afraid to love one another. So I think that that's one of the True. best possible things that that can be done in regards to activism is, is making sure our brothers and sisters look in the mirror and love what they see. I am so for that. It starts with yourself. Love yourself first. And it will just snowball from there. I love that. I love that. That is so great that you're doing uh, things for the community, uh, giving back in addition to uh, the Jet Setting Jasmine uh, 
part of it. You you also just went on a tour to to London um, in March, March fourth, fifth, tenth, eleventh, and it was called the Royal Fetish XXX tour, right? Yes, and we're not done with it yet. You're not. Oh, okay. So we're headed ah. to Mexico, Colorado, and Atlanta. We stop in Atlanta. Oh. So what could you share with us about the tour and also about this um let's see, I think you just recently is this the sex down low? The sex I said sex down low, you know what my mind is. Sex down <laughs> south sex down south conference. Well that was um that was last year. It's a wonderful conference. It will be back next year again. Okay. Um or this year I should say, I think in the fall. And it was just a great time being able to showcase and talk at him workshops and party with some amazing people in the sex industry and those that are sex uh, positive and curious. But um, so on the tour, we've been going to different cities, hosting workshops, uh, performing, shooting, and um, also taking some private fetish clients in different cities and countries and it's been a lot of fun very 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 exhausting um but so worth it to connect with people that we talk to online or you know perhaps they're listening to your show uh, and we get to connect with them where they live so it's been beautiful and i'm very very thankful to all the towns and cities and countries that um have welcomed us Um, and what about hedonism? I've always heard of hedonism, and I have not experienced hedonism. But for those that are not familiar with hedonism, could you share with us about hedonism? And are you participating? How often have you participated? So we are going back to hedonism, which is in the grill, Jamaica on September 30th through October 5th. Um, it's going to be an amazing time at this beautiful, beautiful resort. It's an adult-only resort, so you don't have to worry about children um, running around. You know, you can't bring your own, so it's just really a time for adults to connect to have a good time. It is as mild as you want it to be or as wild as you want it to be. It's a beautiful Beautiful place. Um, it's clothing optional. So, you know, depending on how you feel, you can wear clothes or you can choose not to. And there's activities the entire week. King and I are hosting the week. Um, King, do you want to share a little bit about what they will see from us at here? Wow. Uh, <laughs> it's clothing optional, so... I'm sure you're going to see a lot from us at Hedo. But we will also be doing events while we are there. We're going to be hosting a pool party. So you'll get to see me perform some music. Jasmine, I think you went viral last year with your bathing suit and had all kinds of people catfishing as you in the bathing suit. So I'm sure Jasmine will do something extremely special this year at the pool party. But we're also going to be doing stealing stilettos and fetish training workshops. I believe we will also be doing some filming while we're out there. And most importantly, we will be relaxing on the beach, hopping in the kayak, uh, eating as much uh, jerk chicken and beef patties and drinking as much rum punch as humanly possible. <laughs> so, I think I think one thing people automatically think is, oh, it's hedonism. I have to go out there and just, I don't know, have sex with everybody. You know, it's it's really the thing that makes it free. And and when I say free, like the actual actual freedom is that you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. But if there are things that you want to do, then you can do them. And I think that that's what that's what makes it the best. <laughs> the best place I've been to on vacation because I definitely enjoy being naked and 
whenever possible. But, you know, sometimes I like to just be naked in the privacy of my own little beach. And they, they make that they make that possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I enjoy being free, too. I come from a family uh, that uh, likes to express their uh, uh, freedom and just uh, not wear too many clothes around the house. I mean, even now... I, I don't even see the purpose in wearing, wearing clothes to bed. I, I, I don't understand that. But I'm going to teach you something. Unless it's something sexy. Um, before we get ready to close out, can we talk about why do you think African Americans have uh, such difficulty um, exploring this side of BDSM and kink um, and fetishes? Why does it seem taboo in our community? I think we we definitely um, we we are sexually repressed because we're oppressed. Mm -hmm. So I think that a lot of times, you know, in regards to certain sexual acts, like let's say submission, for example, in regards to black men, we're Mm -hmm. told that a black man is supposed to act one kind of way in order to be a man, and that's because we've had manhood defined to us by our oppressors. So our oppressor is not going to tell us the greatest way to be a man. They're going to tell you how to be a man for that. Um, also, obviously, through experiences that we've had in the present and the past, you know, handcuffs or whips and chains will make us feel a little bit uncomfortable, and rightfully so. But I think that that goes back to our initial conversation that not all things fetish and not all things kinky need to involve uh, one specific item or a few specific items that, that it's actually, you know, sex is as infinite as your creative mind can be. Hmm. But I, I, I think that that all plays a part to it. And, uh, you know, then you have just neighborhood and the church and worrying too much about what other people think. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think, Jeff? Oh, I think you, I definitely think you covered it all. Um, I'm, you know, I don't know if it's just because, you know, we're getting older and they're um, working so closely with people who are seeking out liberation sexually. But um, I, it seems to be the way that we're starting to move more towards, you know, exploring who we are and accepting our fullness as people. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that we just continue to spread the word through shows like yours, uh, through some of the events and the work that we're doing in the community, to so let people just be able to have that outlet that really is our God-given life. Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree. Um, now, <clears throat> King Noir, you made me think of something when you uh, spoke of the freedom that you can express at uh, Hito. Um Let's talk just briefly about boundaries. How important is it to set boundaries when you're engaging in uh, BDSM? And do you have what you call safe words or, or, or safe phrases that are used to say? Oh, oh. Well, making sure that everybody's safe is of the utmost importance. It, it comes first and foremost. You shouldn't engage in any kind of act especially an act that can wind up in somebody being injured or hurt, whether it be physically, mentally, or emotionally, without setting up some sort of boundaries and letting somebody know what your limits are. Safe words are the best way to do that because when you are in a moment of role play or passion, you know, people will just go with it. You know, right. and having a word um, usually, well, not usually, we, we suggest using a word that is non-sexual. You know, and also sometimes people like uh, to play with the dynamics of, you know, the word no can mean yes or stop can mean continue. So you don't, you want to use something that is completely outside of the sexual realm for somebody like uh, everybody thinks of Kevin Hart's joke with pineapples, right? But pineapples is pretty good because that's not something you're just going to utter in the bedroom uh, at any given moment. So it has to be something that's jarring enough for everybody to really get out of that space and to make sure that they take care of 
of the sub in that situation and mm-hmm. make sure that everything is communicated pro- um, to the utmost. Mm-hmm. We can ask our police force before we get off um, for the night. Yes. So we, we would like each of you to give us your safe word. Oh, okay, my safe word. Ooh, let's see. I guess my safe word would be uh, blue. Could I say blue? Mm-hmm. That's blue a good word. one. Because my I think that would be kind of odd just to yell butter. out. Oh, peanut butter. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you okay. guess blue, blue works very well because it's also one syllable. You don't oh. want to have, have too many syllables. Because oh, it might not okay. be something that you can get out quick enough. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, yes. oh, okay. I didn't mm-hmm. think about that. I didn't mm-hmm. think about that. Hmm. Need to be able to release that quickly. Blue. Blue means yeah. stop. So yeah, set those boundaries ahead of so time. One that one that we use. Um, if you're ever having a hard time remembering, or you can't um, come up with one. We mm-hmm. like to use red, yellow, and green. What is it? Yep. So green is I didn't go. Know you... Oh, green oh. is go. Uh huh. Okay. Yellow means slow down. It's getting a little too oh. intense. Oh. And red means stop. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> that was so great. Everybody knows those. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I love it. And and also you have before you go, I wanted people to know that you have a, a radio show. I love the name of it. Um uh, Mile High Show, Orly Yours, right? Is this something new? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. I, I, I can't hear you. Um, well, can you go ahead? I can hear you really clearly. Well, we have, we've been on a hiatus for the show, but we're bringing it back now. We have, uh, oh, okay. I think already we had, uh, over the last few years, been just on the road so much it was it was hard for us to do the show but technology has finally caught up to our to our lifestyle so we'll be able to get back to the show okay fantastic so can you let people um know just again before you leave um how can people contact you and how can they follow you if they're interested in following because i know i am and, and all of your services, fetish training, playful pole, steel and stilettos, all of the services. You want to go ahead, Jeff? Oh, sure. Absolutely. I just wanted to make sure that you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, wonderful. So, yes, contact us for... Um, if you have an event coming up and perhaps you want to have a fantasy flight party, they are totally customized. So we would actually sit, spend some time with you and um, work on developing the perfect event. Um, let's see what else we have going on. We do have our poll parties. Just go on our website. All of our services are all there. If you're looking right. to eat things up a little bit, check out our adult entertainment um, site at Royal Fetish XXX. Dot com, and you can also find that on our main site. We are taking several trips this year, and um, check and see if your city or town is on our list of places to go. And if it's not, all you have to do is host us, and we'll be on our way. And I will let King give you all of our social media. There's so many. Um, for me, pretty much it's Jet Setting Jasmine across the board. Well, you can find me, King Noir, that's K-I-N-G-N-O-I-R-E, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. I will warn you, 
my Twitter and my Snapchat has all kinds of nakedness on it, so it is not suitable for work or around uh, someone that you'll get in trouble for looking at it with. And it's cool. <laughs> but I do say check us out on all of that. You can also find uh, Loyal Fetish Films on Twitter and Instagram to get updates on all the latest releases of our films. RoyalFetishXXX.com also on Night Float and Clips for Sale. So, you know, you can find our films just about everywhere. All right. And may I add, they are very, very pleasing to the eye. Yes, yes they and are. And King North. Yeah. Yes, they very are. I love your hair. I love your hairstyle. Okay, ooh, I'm following Royal Fetish Films right now. Follow. And Jet Set Jasmine. And King Noir. Okay, I am following, and you all should do the same. So thank you both so much for joining us tonight. We'll have to have you back because I'll have to let you know about my homework assignment that I will dig into tonight. So, uh, Father Light. I got us now. You should yes. have a you should have a homework assignment. She should have one I too. I don't. I don't have. I don't have any. I don't have any equipment. Well, you don't, don't need equipment. To... That's what we've just been explaining tonight. It's it's mental. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. She needs to touch herself or something. <laughs> Man, you need some homework too. So they have to How about this? You said you said you just um you just followed us on what was that Instagram or Twitter? Um, Twitter. And we'll go on Instagram. So we will work on what we spoke about earlier, which was trying to introduce something to to your partner. So I want you to send a very nice DM. You're gonna go down in our DMs tonight. I want you to send a nice one to Jasmine and a nice one to me. And we'll see how good we'll see how good your 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 words are. Mm, we're, gonna, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna work with your mind tonight. What's the That's a direct message. Oh, okay. She, she's not familiar with social media. So this oh. is Black Rose. Black Rose see, is for me. This is a this is a good a good way to start. Because you're going to be able to use social media as a conduit for some for some fun things. Okay. All right. Sounds All right. I got me. my assignment. I need, I need <laughs> some help. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll help you with that. I'll help you. Okay. Well, thank you both. And we'll have to have you back. And everyone, be sure to check out that article on... Jet Setting Jasmine in Ebony. Um, you can read the online article and also the article from last year. That's, I believe that's correct. And um, we are going to explore this subculture. Relax, release people, enjoy yourself, love yourself. I believe that all of this does help with our confidence and um, just living life. You know, I'm a, a promoter of living life, so... I think this is a part of that, and it helps us. So we appreciate your time. I'm a promoter of loving your body. Oh, yes, yes. She's definitely the love your body person. And so I believe all of this plays into loving your body, exploring your body so that you can love your body. And love yourself. Yes. Yes. So thank you both. And we will be in touch with you because we have to have you back. And hopefully I can see you in Negril, Jamaica, walking around naked. (laughs) And let it all hang out, baby. And do some stealing stilettos on the beach. Yes. Looking forward to it. it. (laughs) All right. Yes. Thank you. Best wishes. Best wishes for just sitting Jasmine. All right, we'll take a break and we'll be back here at the Mind, Body, and Spirit Radio Show. You are tuned in and stay tuned in because we're going to come back with our African spirit and celebrate the Fannie Lou Hamer.
The Black Talk Radio Network is made possible in part with help from the Black Talk Media Project, a North Carolina-based nonprofit engaged in the production and distribution of independent digital black media. Find out more by going to blacktalkradionetwork.com or blacktalkmediaproject.org and look for the menu tab, Crowdfunding Black Media. Black Talk Media Project, helping to provide you with new black media for the new millennium. Tuned in to Black Talk Radio, new black media for the new millennium. All right, and we are back here at the Mind, Body, and Spirit Radio Show here at Black Talk Radio Network. And be sure to log on to the Black Talk Media Project page so that you can donate so that we can continue bringing you the shows and the information. If you are not already following Black Talk Media Network on YouTube or the Twitters, then you should, and also on Facebook, so that you can keep up and uh, know what's going on and uh, be uh, uh, connected to all of the shows and our awesome hosts on the platform. Now, last week, um, we were very negligent because we did not honor our female, our woman uh, for the night um, here in this Women's Women's Month, celebrating women, international women and all that. We did not get a chance to speak on our African spirit person for the night uh, figure, Fannie Lou Hamer. So tonight we are going to share with you some uh, some of her accomplishments. And who was Fannie Lou Hamer? When I think of Fannie Lou Hamer, I always think of uh, her saying, um, sick and tired of being sick and tired. And right. uh, um, if, you were, if you were born in America, then you were born in jail. I always think of uh, those statements, very vocal statements by Fannie Lou Hamer. And I remember reading um, that... When Fannie Lou Hamer became an activist and she was going around encouraging people to speak up and speak out, she was issued a, I think it was $3,000 water bill. $3,000. And sometimes I just think about the harassment that our people had to endure. And they kept on fighting. They kept on striving. So Fannie Lou Hamer was um, born in 1917, passed in 1977. She was an activist, civil rights activist, and philanthropist. Uh, She was born on October 6, 1917, and she passed March 14, 1977. So yesterday uh, was her... Uh, transition date. Born in Montgomery County, Mississippi, and uh, she made her transition in Mound Bayou, Mississippi. Uh, she was a civil rights activist who helped African Americans register to vote and who co founded the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. And um, let's see, she encouraged, as we mentioned, blacks to uh, register to vote. And uh, she also worked for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, which fought racial segregation and injustice in the South. In 1964 is when she helped found the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. Now, in her early life, um, Fannie Lou Hamer was born, she was born Fannie Lou Townsend as we said, in Montgomery County. She was the youngest of 20 children, 20. Her parents were sharecroppers in the Mississippi Delta area. And she began working in the fields as early as six years old. Uh, Around age 12, Fannie Lou had to drop out of school 
to work full-time and help out her family. And she continued to be a sharecropper after her marriage, which, which took place in 1944, to Perry, Pat, they called him Pat, Hamer. And the couple worked on a cotton plantation near Ruleville, Mississippi. They were, they were unable to have children after Hamer had a surgery to remove a tumor. And during the operation, her surgeon, surgeon gave her a hysterectomy to which she did not consent, without her consent. And in fact, in Mississippi, <clears throat> this was so common for this to be done to black women in Mississippi, <clears throat> excuse me, that it was called the Mississippi appendectomy. And Hemi Lou was said to, in a statement, she said, I would say about six out of ten Negro women that go to the North Sunflower County Hospital are sterilized without their consent. So this was done on a regular basis. Now, in the summer of 1962, came a and, and Father Light, if I could just jump in, um, sure. and not not just in Mississippi did that occur, but like uh, uh, there was just recently um, some revelations about women in North Carolina being sterilized, numerous women, and um, I'm quite sure uh, throughout the country. But uh, mm -hmm. this this happened. So often, and, and even in some of the uh, prisons, women have reported being sterilized, even uh, just, just recently. And then one, another quick, quick point, when you mentioned that uh, she was the youngest of uh, 20 children. Now, when you hear someone being the youngest of 20 children, that may sound like uh, incredulous. Um, and when I first heard it, I was like, ooh, 20 children. Well, Papa, he must have had about two families. Because we hear about... Um, children that were uh, had had like nine or ten or eleven other siblings, but when you think of having nineteen other siblings, I'm wondering, you know, did he have two families? Because I mean, we know that that did happen. But then when you think about it too, when people were living on these farms, they had uh, to have a number of children. They would often have like more than five children because they need they they were in need of those extra hands to help with that land. So quite right. often people would have these large families because you actually had the large families that were helping to work the land. So I just right. wanted to share that part. And I believe Del <clears throat> Delta Cooper, um, she is one of, I think, 19 children. Uh, you know what, Delta Cougar just jumped on the line. Delta Cougar, how many, um, how many siblings do you have or did you have? Okay, my mother had 27 kids. Mm. Oh. Whoa! Lord have mercy. Wait a minute. This, no, this is a true story. I promise to God. Man, y'all do it oh. like that in Mississippi. She had 27, oh. and out of her 27, she had 18 to live. And her, oh. her sister's name had 13, 14, 8, 12. And ten, but my mama had more than any of her siblings. Wow, mm. Mm. that's amazing. See, so that that's that's, that's not amazing. odd for Fanny Lou Hamer yeah. to be the youngest of twenty because Delta said wow. that they had uh, twenty-seven. Ooh, twenty-seven. Uh -huh. And then, and my mother said back in the old days, she said the reason that the black ladies had so many kids. My mother said your husband had to sign for you to get birth control, and if he didn't sign, you couldn't get him. And my mother really? said, yeah, and she said in wow. those days, the husband had to sign, and if he didn't sign, you couldn't, you couldn't get them. And then if your husband didn't sign for you to get your tubes tied, you couldn't get them tied. And my mother says, and it was a long time before they found out about birth control, she said that it was a white lady felt so sorry for her and said that it was a white nurse, and she the one helped my mother to birth control. But back then, your husband had to sign, and my mother said back then a lot of men wouldn't sign for their wife uh, 
take birth control, they didn't allow it. They didn't allow for them to take birth control. Mm -hmm. If your mother fell and just you couldn't have them, you couldn't have them. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's what I was saying came from uh, barefoot and pregnant. <clears throat> barefoot and pregnant, exactly. Mm -hmm. Barefoot and pregnant. Wow. All right. Well, um, Halo Hamer and her husband, although she could not have children, they did raise two children from an imp from impoverished homes. They were so poor that they helped them, and they raised those, those two children. And then they adopted two daughters of one of them, that died, so they continued to help um, people who, who who needed help in the, in that regard. Now, in uh, the summer of 1962, things really changed for for Hemi, uh, Fanny Lou Hamer because she became uh, involved in civil rights actions, and she was one of those who encouraged African Americans to register to vote. She was one of the small group of African Americans in her area who decided to register register themselves. And on August 31st, 1962, she traveled with 17 others to the county courthouse in Indianola to accomplish this goal. And they encountered oppositions that you would not, you cannot imagine, from local and state law enforcement along the way. Mm. And. Of course, Fannie Lou Hamer, um, we know she was so brave, and but her bravery came at a very high price. She was fired from her job, and she was driven from the plantation she called home for nearly two decades just for registering to vote. But these actions only solidified her resolve to help other African Americans get the right to vote. And um, according to the New York Times, she said, they kicked me off the plantation, they set me free. It's the best thing, the best thing that could happen. Now I can work for the people. And she dedicated her life to the fight for civil rights, uh, working for SNCC. And um, SNCC was mostly comprised, of course, of African-American students who engaged in acts of civil disobedience to fight racial segregation and injustice in um, in the South. Uh, these, are, these acts were often met with violent responses by angry whites during the course of her activist career. Hammer was threatened, arrested, beaten, and shot at. She was nearly, she was severely injured in 1963 um, in Wyoming, Mississippi, in a Wyoming, Mississippi jail. She and two other activists were taken in by police after attending a training workshop uh, uh, Fannie Lou was beaten so badly that she suffered permanent kidney damage. See. And also uh, permanent damage to her eyes mm -hmm. and her legs. Yeah. 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 And see, that. and, that's, and, and, and that's so sad. That's so sad, and this is our history. Mm -hmm. And this is what we try to teach the young folk. Don't take your vote for granted. People died for the right for you to vote. People suffer in order for you to vote. And these mm -hmm. young folks take it for granted. They don't realize the sacrifice these older people made. They ancestors who went before them and the sacrifices they had to make. When I hear that, how you saying how she was eating and all that, they just do something to me. It, it just something to me. I just, oh, I did just do something to me. Yeah. I don't think that they take it for granted. I think some may take it for granted, but I don't think that they just necessarily take it for granted. I think it's more so that they don't see anything coming from their vote. And so they've just become disenchanted with uh, right. voting because they see that it's just been uh, like a political game. It's like people vote. And uh, what happens, the, 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 it's, the deck is stacked with the Electoral College vote, just like with this presidential election. Uh, Hillary Clinton so-called won the popular vote, but that doesn't really decide the vote. So the elect Electoral College decides the vote. And then people um, become disenchanted because we only have these two political parties. I was just looking at this um, 
and then we get back. And I think uh, we have a comment from someone else. Um, I was just looking at this uh, 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 interview, a news article about, uh, I think it's, oh, I want to say, I, I can't recall which country in Africa, maybe somewhere on the West Coast. Um, there are 86, 86 parties that have applied for a petition wow. to be a party. Yeah. 86. 86. And so in, in other countries, they do have more than two or three parties. And so these young people that are uh, uh, learning about political science, they see how other countries have all of these different parties, Labor Party, Worker Party, Green Party, all these other parties that are extremely active. And it's not just a Democrat or Republican Party. And so they feel like... Uh, you know, why do I need to waste my time voting? First of all, you only put up two or three people or five people, rather, that I'm supposed to be interested in. But right. these five people never came into my neighborhood ever before. I don't even know these people. These are not activists. These people own companies. They own corporations. I don't know them. They don't know me. They're not connected. I can't, they, they can't relate to me, and I can't relate to them. So why should I vote for them? So I think it's more like people, they just especially young people, they've just become disenchanted with the whole voting process because it has no real connection to them. And now I know that a lot of young people now also are beginning to run for office because they're being uh, educated on how they can run. So I think that has some good and maybe some negative consequences to it also. Okay. But, I mean, we'll, we'll see. And then a lot of, a lot of, like in my community now, they having a, a mayor race, and they got eleven candidates, um, eleven or twelve, and one, all the rest are black, and one is white, and the town is predominantly black, <laughs> and we need to come together because what's gonna happen? You gonna split that vote up? And that white man going to wind up winning just like what just happened up in Ferguson. And so we got to learn to to, to uh, get our vote together. We got to learn to come, you know, come together. Why left is going to be running and you know it's going to split the vote? Yeah, because Negroes just don't think sometimes, and they know that. They, I mean, they, they know the math on that. And sometimes it's just so much about ego and, and your party and your position and promoting yourself and you having party that they don't even think sensibly. Um, Scotty, I think you have a comment. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, greetings, ladies. Namaste, greetings, Scotty. Scotty. I just okay. want to piggyback off of what Delta said. And y'all touched upon a number of things. Um, the first thing, you just mentioned voting. Well, a lot of our people being told they vote don't matter, so they believe it don't matter. And then we always focus in on presidential politics and not worried about the judge that's on the local district right. court. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I can give you a story where there was this black man who was a civil rights activist during the 60s who became a lawyer. Um, he actually, in North Carolina, filed a civil rights lawsuit and I forget, but it had nation, nation, nationwide implications. I just can't remember what it was that he had done. And this man was the chief district judge in the court where I live, in the county of 80% white people. And, and he became the chief district judge. And I didn't know this man's history like that until I've been in his courtroom a couple of times. And this man was, was practicing justice. This man actually gave me custody of my children because I was going oh. through a, I was doing going through a custody thing where I don't like talking bad about my children's mothers. But let's just say she wasn't in a good place to where she could care for the children. And she was listening to other people and not realizing that she's sick instead of getting some help, want to try to, you know, just just keep me from my children and all that. So so, you know, I was fighting through the courts. Uh, cost me a lot of money and what have you. But this man, like when he's found out that she had just dropped the kids off to me and whatnot, he just went ahead and, and, and said, I'm going to sign this order. It was a temporary order, but it turned into permanent and gave me my kids. 
And then I was with before him in criminal court where somebody was messing with me and my kids, and I told him, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to cut your damn head off, right? So I communicated a threat to them. So he found me guilty. But then after I got off the stand and he didn't render it guilty because I didn't get up there and lie, I said, yeah, I told him. I said, I was going to kill you. <laughs> and so anyway, anyway, he found me guilty, right? So afterwards, though, he saw them, the so-called defendants, in the courtroom come up, getting all in my face, cheesing and stuff. And he saw that. And do you know that man reversed that conviction and took it off my record? Wow. And then told the prosecutor, said, your people wasn't innocent in this. So me voting for this man and other people voting for this man, I directly benefited from him being on the bench. Yes, yes, you did. Mm -hmm. I also only been called once, but I got called for jury duty. Where are they sending our people to, who's sending our people to prison? These juries, are they not? Well, if you don't register to vote in North Carolina or if you don't have a valid driver's license or a state ID, you ain't getting a jury pool. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of it is a lack of education, a lack of organization. Mm -hmm. See, when we talk about other groups, we don't automatically, when we talk about the Jews, do we automatically associate them with Republicans or Democrats? No, we don't. When we talk about Hispanics, do we automatically associate them with Republicans or, or Democrats? No, we don't. Nope. But when we talk about black people, we know that they own that Democratic plantation. And so why? Right. And, and we don't know how to play the game. We ain't operating as an yeah. independent voting block like Malcolm X told us to. And we just solidly on no matter who. That's why they that's why they had the audacity to throw a Hillary Clinton up on their ticket and cheat, yeah. you know, to put her on the ticket. Because they know mm-hmm. the black exactly. folks were going to vote for her mm-hmm. anyway. Except for them. But them young people said, no, she called us super predators when I was a toddler in the crib. I ain't voting for that racist woman. (laughs) (laughs) I know, that's right. Yeah. And then they try to tell us, you know, be sure you vote straight Democratic ticket. I stopped doing that. I stopped doing that. So I started really, really researching. It's a lack of political education. Even our revolutionary groups like the Black Panther Party told us to vote. But they also gave us political education classes and told us how to vote in our own interests and to to teach us how to control the local politics. That's right. So, But Mm -hmm. on the thing about civil rights, I've been thinking about this lately, and I'm just like everybody else. I fall under the influence of certain people or, or media because everybody's saying it. I believe it's true. So I did used to be in the camp to where, oh, we shouldn't have been fighting for civil rights, human rights, and all this and that. Well, then I started thinking about it. How dare you talk trash about Dr. King or any of those people just because they chose a certain tactic, a nonviolent tactic, and all this and that. And people saying, oh, they were begging the white men. For, no, they weren't. They were telling these people, you're not going to take my money and mistreat me and tell me I can't use Why? something. You know what I'm saying? And, and so we yeah. call into that, that I call it anti-blackness because there are certain mm-hmm. people and then like somebody will say, well, Martin K- Malcolm X even said so and so about Dr. King. I was like, you ain't read all of Malcolm X because when mm-hmm. Malcolm X went down there to Selma, he, what did he say? He was talking trash in the media but he told uh, uh, Dr. King's wife that, listen, I'm not doing this to attack him. I'm trying to make his job easier because they see me and I'm... Right, I remember that, yeah. yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And he told mm-hmm. them yeah. to give, and he yeah. did say give Dr. King what he wants because what he's asking for is right. But no, That's we, right. we want to be stuck in, in, you know, these people grew and they transformed. We want to think about only Malcolm X when he was under the influence of Elijah Muhammad, and we don't want to talk about Malcolm X when he came out the Nation of Islam and started his own organization mm-hmm. and how right. he had transformed on some of his views. So a lot of it is right. just miseducation and then people with an agenda. True. You, you, it, it's like this. Like, I had a group of friends, and this is what we said about Dayton. You are a weak man if you got to talk trash about the other guy, 
you know, in order to make yourself look good to the girl. And that's what I see what's going on. There you go. There Th- you go. Thanks for letting me share. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing, Scotty. Thank you. I wanted to add one more thing about Fannie Lou Hamer that a lot of people may not be aware of. When she was, uh, when they were arrested, the group were arrested in 1963 on the way home from Winoma, Winoma, Mississippi. The officers who stopped the bus, now the bus was leaving, going the way home, going on the uh, on the way back home. The officers stopped the bus because get get ready, wait for it. The bus was too yellow. He the bus was like too yellow. The, like the color of the bus, so he stopped the bus, and from that, it led to him. Fatty Lou Hamer was already on the bus. She was, they were ready to leave. She stepped off the bus to see what's the hole up and do we need to go on? And, and, and from that, she got arrested. The officer, oh, there was a 15-year-old who they arrested because she did not say sir. She was beaten. The officer beat Fannie Lou Hamer um, in the front of the, 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 um, the police station. But then he also forced two African American men to beat her again with his uh, black jack, and so mm-hmm. that's how she was beaten so badly. Mm-mm-mm-mm. That is what she she had to go through. Mm-hmm. But I think about what we have continuously had to experience, not just back then, but even now. It right. is ridiculous, and it is time. For a change. As Sam Cooke said, change gonna come. Change gonna come. Thank you. Well, it is time for us to wrap up and do our R and R. We've had a very eventful, uh, lively night. Mm -hmm. Delta, you missed the fetish fetish trainers. You missed all of that good talk, Delta. Oh, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but then, Anyone that uh, missed it can always go back and listen to the podcast. Yes, and you need to um, to get this free gift that they gave too. It's wonderful. You will love it. You will okay. love it. Yes. Do you have a pen handy right away uh, by any chance? If not, you can get it next week. We we'll get. We'll give it to you. Okay. Oh. So let everybody just kind of relax. Did, did you have a pen? Do you have to cook? Who you talk? Oh, uh-uh, I'll get up and get one. Oh, oh, that's okay. That's okay. I, I don't want you to... We'll send it to, to you. To get a, yeah, we'll send it to you. Okay, everybody just relax, raise your shoulders up, and let them flop down. We're going to make this a quick one because we want to uh, go ahead and close out. We're going to just do... Um, there are actually four different phases to breathing. Most of us just think of just two, breathe in, breathe out, but it's actually four. There's the inhale, and then there's the the full pause, full pause, then there's the exhale, and then there's the the silent pause, where you just kind of wait before you inhale again. So we're going to inhale four, count, count of four, we're going to hold it for the count of two, then we're going to exhale to the count of six, because the exhale is very important because you're releasing toxins in your body, and then we're going to pause for two. We're only going to do this twice, but you're free to do this on your own. When you have time. So inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, exhale slowly, two, three, four, five, six, pause, one, two, now inhale again, one, two, three, four, pause. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, and pause. Namaste, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Join us next week. We will have um, Dr. Jennifer Daniels with us. She's going to give us a lot of valuable information. She's the only female African-American doctor who does not practice the traditional uh, medical practices. So she's going to give us a lot of uh, valuable information to take care of ourselves without drugs. Yes, looking forward to hearing her. 
Well, everyone, you can also listen to this show by going on to Black Talk Radio Network and also following us on YouTube. And we'll be back next week. Be sure to tune in same time, 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Eastern here at Mind, Body, and Spirit Radio Show. Peace and namaste. Namaste. Namaste.